Welcome back, Sarek TV viewers. It's Bill again. We're here at Wintergreen 2022. And we have a great interview for you today. I have Jeff Aronson here to take the honors over from me. And we have Bill and Patty Cooper here. So here they are. Thank you very much, Bill. <laughs> So I'm Jeff Ahrens and the editor of Rover's Magazine and I have the honor and pleasure of introducing two friends and avid enthusiasts within the Land Rover community, Patty and Bill Cooper from Blairstown, New Jersey. They are going to take in this vehicle, they're going to recreate the amazing adventure of the British adventurous Barbara Toy, who in the 1950s right up through the 1990s drove Pollyanna, her 80-inch, across the continents, including the United States, published in her book, Columbus Was Right. And recreating the voyage are Bill and Patty Cooper. Congratulations to you both. Bill, tell us a little bit about how you found this vehicle. Uh, this vehicle actually belonged to a friend of mine. Uh, Steve Hoare. Steve Hoare, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he had found it out in Colorado and decided he wasn't going to keep it. And I was thinking about an 80 inch, and well, one thing led to another, and we wound up with another Land Rover. And uh, Bill, if I could, this is not your first or second Land Rover. This is your uh, Land Rover. This is uh, right now, I think we have 18. 18th Land, Land Rover. Rover. Together. Yes. All together. In one All together. Location. We've had yeah, others moment. that are gone now, so <laughs> overall there's probably been 20-something. But <laughs> So, Patty and Bill, tell us what excited you about the idea of Barbara Toy's voyage. Give us a little background on Barbara Toy, please. Well, the interest in recreating this uh, really sparked with the Oxford journey. and, and That would be the know, Oxford finding, across America. Um, and then, you know, thinking about it, and I knew about the Women's Himalaya Expedition and Barbara Toy's exploits. We realized, you know, a lot of people knew about Oxford and everything Oxford did, but it seemed like over the years, Barbara had sort of been forgotten, even though she was one of the pioneers of overland travel and Land Rovers. You know, years before Oxford, mm -hmm. she had bought her little 80-inch Pollyanna and had driven already, she'd driven around Africa, she'd driven across the Middle East. She was the first woman to drive in Saudi Arabia when it was still illegal for women to drive. She got special dispensation from the king to actually drive through Saudi Arabia. She even had to carry a letter with her to explain <laughs> to the police that it was okay and please don't arrest me. <laughs> um, so we thought, you know, more people should really know about Barbara and what she did. And, you know, I think on the one webpage I called her sort of the first lady of Overland Land Rover travel. Um, so the idea was to just raise awareness. Now we can't replicate unfortunately these days all of her travels <laughs> it's not really practical to drive through some areas of the Middle East right. and places where she was but we can do what we're recreating was her first crossing of North America so we decided that was a good starting point um, so it, I got the book looked at the route she took and we decided you know we're actually doing it reverse of what she did okay so um, she started in san francisco she started then? in san francisco and it was really the last leg of her round the world her first wow. round the world drive um so she started in san francisco went down to la then across the southern tier she had planned to come straight across but unfortunately it was november by the time she got to uh, San Francisco and the Rockies were starting to close. You couldn't cross half the passes, so the storms kept driving her south. So she just basically wound up taking the southern tier um, over to Jacksonville, saw the ocean, and then she headed up to New York uh, just in time for Christmas. Oh, so I she took two months to cross the country. Uh, sadly, we don't have quite the late <laughs> leisure <laughs> of uh, being able to take two months. We're aiming for about three, three and a half weeks. One, um, but. I figured it's been years since I've done a long series drive. I've done done them years past, but it was time to do something and to try to make more people aware of who she was and what she did. And I'll I'll so tell you, traveling please, in an yeah. 80 inch, you know, 1951 truck that only does 45, 50 miles an hour is a very different animal from the 1950s. <laughs> in order to capture travel in the 1950s. Patty and Bill have come up with this extraordinary collection of maps from the 1950s. Um, 
this beautiful one of the eastern states, if we can get that. Remember when service stations actually had men in bow ties oh, and absolutely. caps yeah. to make you feel welcome? Oh, check your oil. Or check your oil. Your this is a 1955-56 map of New Jersey and with special maps of the New York City approaches, Northeast New Jersey and Philadelphia. <laughs> and then this wondrous one that Patty and I were joking about earlier, the f perfect family visiting some Southwest state, New Mexico, that's it. And these are just joyous because every map is absent today's interstates. Yes, yes. So yeah. these are the routes that you're choosing and these are the yeah, guides I'm following that you're using. mostly secondary roads and yeah. I'm using those as references to try and see okay what right. roads existed we know cities she stopped at and okay. places she visited so it's like okay she probably used this road this, this road, highway that this. Was, that's excellent the only one there right patty what is it what does it mean to you as a land rover enthusiast to actually caps encapsulate barbara toy it means a lot. I mean, you know, women's history, and so it's always been a kind of an interest of mine. And the idea that this woman was doing this stuff long before, you know, feminism ever became a thing, even. And she was a person who just didn't seem to want to take no for an answer. <laughs> she, she did what she wanted to do, and she had fun doing it. She, she was rather strong. Lived her life <laughs> the way she wanted to, and that's something really to be appreciated. And uh, she was single the whole time, yes. right? Yeah. 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 She had yeah. been married earlier. It briefly didn't work out uh, yeah. briefly, um, but she did all of this solo. Um, I mean, she would occasionally pick up traveling companions for parts of the journeys, and there were a few points on some of her trips, like across Libya and such, where the authorities just absolutely refused to let her travel alone. She had to have another. She had to team vehicle. up with some other vehicles. But honestly, even she admitted. Crossing some of the deep deserts, you don't really want to do that solo. You want a couple of vehicles because you will get stuck. Right. It's not a if, it's a <laughs> you will get stuck. You need other vehicles to help get the other ones out. Um, you have to work together, yeah. Yeah. So, but for the most part, she was doing this all by it's herself. Extraordinary. It's absolutely extraordinary what she accomplished. It, it was. There's, there's Over a couple. Over decades. Is yes. that yes, correct? Am absolutely. I right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she did it throughout the 50s and 60s. Uh, there, there was sort of a touching point where after this round-the-world drive, mm -hmm. Land Rover had sort of taken notice Good point, yes. of Barbara and her trips and were seeing her as a brand ambassador, except they didn't really want her driving around in a 10-year-old Land Rover. It they convinced her to trade it in for a newer Series 2. This was in the early 60s. Right. And they convinced her to trade in Pollyanna for a 109. Um, she hated it. <laughs> I mean, she, she acknowledged that it had more power, it was more comfortable, it held more, it was more capable in many ways, but she missed her Pollyanna. Patty, and have you um, driven this? No. 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 This is Bill's toy. We, <laughs> well, it, it's also, we have to, Patty used to drive a stick, but we really have to sort of re-educate her on I driving like a stick. I've got to get back in this. I'm and yeah. non-synchro mesh transmission. Ah, of we have course, to that's right. <laughs> so, Bill, this extraordinary. This is a 1951. Is that correct? correct? This extraordinary correct. 1951 80-inch truck and came to you really beautiful. But what did you find as you tried to say this is a 3,000-mile trip? Yeah, it basically all the mechanicals had to go through. When when Barbara did her drive, Pollyanna was six years old. <laughs> this truck right. is now 71 years old with 71 year old parts and so it really needed a full going through and it had been assembled it had been pulled apart and reassembled two owners prior to me and some things could have been assembled better than yeah. they were yep. so we basically had to just go through everything and make sure that everything was tight or lock tabs or everything was actually where it needed to be and then there was a whole series of shakedown runs and things right. prior to it you know, 130 mile loops, and you know, we did it. We did uncover things. Still, you know, yeah. lock tabs that weren't in place, so kept ah. those in place. The distributor shorted out right before we were leaving. Yes, you mentioned that. Uh, the carburetor cracked right before we were ready to leave. So, fortunately, having lots of rovers, it was a quick trip out to the garage. And the other 80 inch truck is now missing a few <laughs> pieces that are now on this one. Um, and then, you know, basically we were ready to go. So we drove from Jersey down here to Wintergreen, 
That was the first two days. We were figuring on three days to get down here, and actually we got here Just in, in a day and a half <laughs> because everything actually did go quite well. Um, we did 160, 70 miles the first day and about 190 the second day. Um, and the truck ran fine, um, other than there were a couple of single single lane uphill routes that maybe some people weren't as fond of us as those <laughs> who were behind you. <laughs> and those who were behind us. Yes. Um, but sadly, the lost halfway up the hill, and yeah. The truck only does 45, 50 miles an hour, and that's, that's just you know in the 1950s that wasn't a problem. No, right. Modern day, we got to be a little more conscious of those things. So, if I'm correct. You decided to put an overdrive, a ferry I did, overdrive? I and it was yeah. really just to, you know, it is a 1.6 liter engine mm -hmm. of 48 horsepower, I believe. Um, and it's really, it's not to go faster, it's just to cut some of the RPMs. RPM. When we get on a nice flat stretch, pop in the overdrive and just let it, you know, the idle, the RPMs come down 500 RPM and just That's nice. yeah. take a, a slightly easier time on the engine. So do you have any idea how many miles are on this engine? Uh, no, honestly, no. I, I don't think there's that many on the engine itself, yeah. and we have no idea, because the guy who did the rebuild, uh, when he put it together, he put a new speedometer, odometer in oh, it, so it was zero. at zero. You know, it was on, I think, uh, 50 or 60 miles when I got the truck. Yeah. It's now over a thousand something. There you but go. And it will be 4,000-something long before we, uh, we get done. The total so drive is about 4,000 miles. And can you trace for us in your, what do you envision the route from this direction? You leave Wintergreen and what? We're going to leave Wintergreen and we're going to head south um, down to Jacksonville. And we were sort of laying it out, or I was laying it out earlier this morning. So we're just going to sort of work our way in a more or less straight line from here down to Jacksonville. Probably actually hit... Um, hit for the coast uh, right around Hilton Head okay and then run down the rest of the way yeah. down the coast um, and then from Jacksonville we're gonna work away across to New Orleans uh, There's a map here of New Orleans a <laughs> yeah, 1950s absolutely. Map. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to admit my wife and I are rather fond of New Orleans so there may be an extra day's lag in New Orleans to enjoy the food and the <laughs> One of our favorite restaurants happens to be in New Orleans, so yeah. <laughs> so see if we can get you out of New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, well, you know yeah, well, that, that, that could be a problem. Like but and are you going to head uh, in effect paralleling what today is I ten or something like Pretty that? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, we have found that it, you know, with the fact that we do have a limited top speed, uh, we are better off on two lane roads. Oh, sure. Yeah. So even if it's an interstate where it's sixty five, right. I can stay to the right with flashers on, and then yes. people can pass there me as go. they need to. Right. We're less of a traffic hazard than on a single lane road That's where true. we're blocking everybody. Right. There, always, there isn't always a shoulder for us to both pull over. Yeah, exactly. and then we found a few through Virginia here where it's just there was no shoulder to pull off oh on. It's just, I'm sorry, guys, yeah. we're going as fast as we can. Wow. Um, you know, pulling into Wintergreen here, it was second gear at best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a tall hill. Slowly <laughs> climbing the hill. <laughs> and when do you anticipate, if everything goes well, uh, arriving in San Francisco? We're aiming for mid-May. Mid-May. Um, I'm actually hoping, and so far, like I said, uh, things have been, the truck's been running pretty well. So as long as everything stays, um, I was actually looking at it, some folks from um, Houston were asking when we're going to be in the mm -hmm. area. Um, so we're aiming for there around May 1st, uh, heading out to Santa Fe. So if, behind me here, so if people want to follow the tribute run, <laughs> How do we do that online? How do people know where you there's are? A, we'll be there's posting? a Facebook page, okay. uh, Barbara Toy Tribute Tour, uh, right. www.facebook.com slash Barbara Toy Tribute Tour, right. one word. Um, and I'm sure if you just type in Barbara Toy Tribute sure. Tour, it should come up. And I've posted the rough schedule and then really with no promises more than 24 to 48 hours That's out. Okay. Because it is a 71-year-old <laughs> truck. Things happen, Anything things, happen. <laughs> you know. And we hope as enthusiast that you'll be documenting yes. in some manner the trip and we'll be able to we'll be posting things on the pages we'll be filming things we've got the video cameras yes. we've got a little drone we'll be posting little videos I've got people that have made me promise we're because there's a lot of folks around the world that are actually following this journey because there has to be a British group who there are I mean, friends of ours in yeah. Australia New Zealand uh, in the UK that are all you know, you're, you're telling us where you're going. Right. They're all sort of living vicariously through the web page. Which was <laughs> going to be my statement. All of us enthusiasts here in the U.S. 
are both envious as well as desirous of you moving along because we want to know where you are and we yep. want to be able to follow this and pretend that we're and there. And we're also, you know, we may as well bring it up. If people, you know, rover enthusiasts, whatever, yep. Meet up with us, tag along for a, f a few miles with us. We are Reach actively encouraging media, folks yeah. to please, you know, tag along. Come join us for, even if it's for 20 miles. What a way to skip out of work. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Very clever. You know, meet up with us. That's the whole point yeah. is to come say hi. We've got some information about Barbara. Come see us. We're happy to... We're so we're share. here at Wintergreen. If I can jump back to tonight, you folks are going to be speaking. Is that right? Or uh, discussing oh. your journey in front of a couple of folks here at Rove at Wintergreen? Okay, surprise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think David didn't mention that, no, but okay, I think he will. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is great. No hablo inglés. <laughs> <laughs> this has really been wonderful. Really, thank you for the time for <laughs> the interview here, and we thank all the the brains behind Sarek TV for sharing <laughs> this with the rest of the world. Congratulations on all you're accomplishing. We're all rooting for you. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Thank you.